so we're, we've been talking about um, Christmas is not your birthday. Last week we talked a little bit about what does that mean. That means that whether you have a birthday on December 25th, that calendar day, or not, Christmas is still not your birthday. It might be December 25th, but Christmas honors the arrival, the birth of Christ into our broken world. And so the message today is titled, Giving Up on Perfect. We're going to talk a little bit about that, but first I'd like to share the scripture with us today. It continues on from where we were last week, Luke chapter 1, verse 39. This goes over Mary's encounter and visit with Elizabeth. Verse 39. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea. When she entered Zechariah's home and greeted her relative Elizabeth. Verse 41. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child who will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Verse 45. Blessed is she who has believed what the Lord has said to her, and what will be accomplished. Mm -hmm. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord, what the Lord said to her, will be accomplished. Last week, we talked a little bit about, the foretelling of Jesus' birth, about all these things, the arrivals of even an angelic being, even a citizen of heaven, causing some sort of trepidation and fear in the way in which it was delivered. It's not because God's promises aren't sure, is it something that we can trust, but sometimes the way that those promises and the word of God comes to us can sometimes be a little concerning, right? Because it might not just be conveniently scheduled like a jigsaw puzzle piece and what we got going already. Sometimes God interrupts us. Sometimes shakes us a little bit. So I want to take a look at this because Mary is traveling and she's carrying this news. And remember, she already heard that her, her relative Elizabeth who has is, who is, um, had a, a condition where she couldn't have kids, right? But the angel promised her that uh, uh, Elizabeth, through a miracle of God, through the working of the Holy Spirit, would be able to be pregnant. And so she goes to visit. She's carrying her own miracle, but she hears this miracle word that's going on here. And as we'll find out through Scripture, that Elizabeth's child is, is John, and, and will become John the Baptist, the, the forerunner for Christ, that will, that will be baptizing people and preparing Christ, and actually baptize Christ as well. And so we can see in a unique way that already they're interacting with each other, uh, you know, while still in the room, womb in that moment. But Elizabeth is greeting Mary, who is not only younger than her, but also has this greater journey, so to speak. Also has this greater calling, right? I think the opportunity that you are bearing the child who will be the herald for the arrival of Christ, that's pretty significant too, wouldn't you agree? But she's saying it pales in comparison to this miracle. Now, if any of you have ever been, been told or any of you have ever known someone who is not able to have a child and if they wanted one and the kind of struggle and pain and the thing that that kind of brings. So for that moment in your own miracle, know that there was this deliverance in this moment that not only would you have a baby, which is a miracle in itself, but the role that your child will play in the history of creation, God's plan. But to know even bigger than that, she separates herself and says, but there's even someone before me that's better, and that's you, Mary, because the Lord is doing something even more in you. So Mary is coming with these mysteries, and this is what I've been told, and I wanted to see that this is fulfilled. Do you agree that this is the way that Mary can see that the words of the, of the angel are true? Right? Because she's going here and she's seeing proven. So it's the opportunities for her to continue to trust God and what God's going to do. Today's message is called Giving Up on Perfect because when we look at the story, when we're expecting a child, when we get the news, it typically doesn't go like this, does it? Now, of course, this is the exception, right? Because it's the arrival of Christ and this is, this is a, a big part of our, our, our history, of our faith, of our saving grace. Yet this is not what they will come to expect. This is not what their villages were ready to embrace. This is not the new the traditions or the patterns that they were ready to have. I would wonder if they had traditions of baby showers like we do. What would you bring to that? For the Son of God. Kind of glad I didn't have to make that decision. <laughs> uh, so we have some slides here. Uh, Mark, and I'm going to have you go through a couple of them. Oh, you, well, you have the clicker, don't you, Pam? Okay, you're going to draw the clicker, okay is these 
These are some paintings, some snapshots of a, a well-known artist called Norman Rockwell. Now, real quick, I am going to ask for hands because this will determine how fast I can go. How many of you are familiar with Norman Rockwell? Excellent. Great. For those of you who don't have your hands down, the majority wins. So um, we have these Norman Rockwell pictures up here. And so would you click to the next one, Pam? See what's going on here. There's this picturesque moment, right, where Christmas is everything is great, it's happening, and, and everybody's warm, and even the Christmas car carolers, they're not really frostbitten, right? They're not shaking their hands because their gloves are wet and things like that. Can we click to another one? I think this is our last one, isn't it? I think this is our last one, is giving up on perfect. Look at that meal there, right? And, and it doesn't look like Mama's sweating at all, even though she was probably hurting her back, carrying those things, getting those preparations. Everybody's ready to dig into this perfectly cooked turkey. Have you, have you ever seen that uh, uh, Chevy Chase flick for Christmas? The turkey's supposed to be that, but it's not, right? Instead, it's kitty litter, it's jello, it's those other kind of things. And so, can you flip one more time, ma'am? I think that's it. Okay, yep, we'll go back then. Is, I wanted us to think about this because if we're familiar with Norman Rockwell, Norman Rockwell presents these great artistic rendering of a perfect picture, right? And so sometimes when we're flipping through those calendars or those images or those Christmas cards, we can see what we think a perfect moment is supposed to be. And I want us to consider that when we go through these things because it comes with a lot of effort. Right? And so I'm going to go back to that, to that holiday movie because my wife makes me watch it like every year. So whether I like it or not, I know what happens in the movie. That it's, it's a comedy, right? Christmas Vacation. Because it's this moment where there's just a lot of hilarity that ensues. There's a lot of just things that go wrong and they make us laugh and we can relate to it. But you know what the heart of all those things and why it's so endearing? is really at the heart of it what it is. Is it's just a guy trying to provide a perfect Christmas for those that he loves. He wants his kids to know what it feels like to, to lovingly endure family coming in. He wants to have the best decorations on there so his family would be proud. He wants to get the best tree. He wants to have all these things. He wants to put in a pool, right? So his family will, will enjoy these things. And so it is a great comedy in that regard. But remember behind it, it's just a guy trying to just capture a perfect moment for Christmas. That's all he wants. I mean, the movie would be over if he got it in the beginning, right? But it's in this moment that I want us to think of, are we willing to give up on what we want as a perfect Christmas? Do we see those images and, and they give us some, some sort of warm fuzzies, but that we don't go to crazy lengths and end up costing us a lot of things to try to create a perfect moment? Now, what happens if we have that perfect moment? What happens in the next moment? Passes. It's already old, right? Would you agree that we could have a magical day on December 25th, right? With all our traditions. And on the 26th, it comes and goes. And that's a struggle to put down the Christmas tree, right? It's not so fun putting everything away as it is putting it up. In this moment, when Mary goes to visit Elizabeth, things are still not perfect. There's a lot of unanswered questions. There's a lot of mystery, the mystery of faith that we know. And I want us to think about that, my dear friends, because this is in the midst of those moments of chaotic busyness, of planning, of wanting to get everything just perfect. And the behind getting things perfect is because we want the best for our families. We want the best experience. We want to be able to capture all those things so this year will be better than last year. But I do want to ask you this moment. For all that effort, for all that expense, for all that time, for all that resource, for all that stress. Is it worth it? Trying to create a Christmas. Let's say it is. Let's say it is worth it for all the effort that goes into this opportunity, this season. Let's say it is worth it. Is it worth it to you? Or is it worth it to Christ? Because remember, Christmas isn't our birthday. It's Christ's. So are we caring more about our perfect Christmas moment? Or experiencing what God has for us in this season? Are we slowing down enough to be caught by the Savior of this world? Are we just going and going and going and going and going and not looking back? Not looking sideways. 
this first Christmas season that we're looking at, this first arrival of Christ's birth that we celebrate at this moment, is Christmas is not about us, it's about Emmanuel, which translates into God with us. It becomes that moment that we need to remember God is with us, to not travel outside of Him, to not create our own perfect Christmas or our own traditions. But what is it that honors Christ in this place? Because it's not about us, it's about the work of Christ, the arrival of Christ in our world. How do our celebrations and our perfect Christmases and our efforts there go forward and celebrate that arrival? How do we anoint and celebrate that above anything that we ever do? Because we'll put away the Christmas decorations, but in February, we will still be praising God for the arrival of the Savior in this world. Long after the lime trees have dropped and turned color and are forgotten about in the woods, chopped down, the work of the cross will still be here. Christ has never left and never passes. Are we honoring Christ for the situation coming forward this season? Life is messy. The title of the scripture and message, again, is giving up on perfect. Life is messy. I'm not going to ask for hands, because I think we both have to put them up. But we know life is messy. It's not perfect. You know what else is messy? Love. <coughs> Love is messy. It's difficult. It's got all these different ways that we show it and we receive it. And sometimes we even get hurt by it. We get lifted up and anointed by it. It brings us peace. Life and love are messy. And so was the arrival of Christ in our world. There were more people that wanted him dead and gone and were hunting for him. Did you know that the arrival of Christ, when we read the birth, the, um, the birth account of Christ, there were thousands of kids who were killed because people were going after Christ. There are a lot of dreams and other trophies and other saviors the world's going to try to put in front of you trying to kill the spirit of Christmas. And I'm not talking about ho, ho, ho. I'm talking about killing the spirit of the arrival of Christ in this world. Nothing's different. People want to say, happy holidays, or here's your, Chris, or here's your holiday tree. And we cringe, don't we? Because it's become such a moment that we say that we might offend somebody. Jesus, I'm sorry, you know when I was going to claim my faith, but I was afraid of offending somebody. I hope you understand. I'm not trying to be trivial, my friends. I'm not saying they don't believe in Christ because you say happy holidays instead of Merry Christmas. But you know what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying. That we can't be afraid or ashamed of the arrival of Christ in this world in our lives. We can't be too busy to deny that this year. We don't want this to be a throwaway. We can't have a perfect Christmas for us because it's not about us. It's about what Christ wants from us. And Christ came to a messy world and loved us in a messy way. And following Jesus as a disciple of Christ is a messy way of life. We're going to get dirty. We're going to get broken and bruised. But in that moment, we receive a new body. That it will be worth it in this time when we struggle. That we need to give up on perfect and understand if we are going to follow Christ, we are going to have to carry our cross. And that means we're going to be tired. That means we're going to be crabby sometimes. And the journey is going to be messy. But it's not a path that Jesus didn't already get messy for us. My dear friends, can you and I as a church or a people not go looking for a mess. But when we realize that we're in the mess, well, we see that Jesus has already been there. That's where Jesus thrives, is in the mess. That's where Jesus thrives, is in that, that chaos that is in our lives sometimes that God is still working at our left. And we give up on what we want so bad for Christmas. Not that we still can't celebrate. Not that we still can't have family over. Not that we still can't go to great labors to make the jerky and all the things that are going there. Understand, I'm not trying to take anything away from your Christmas. I'm trying to get us to the head of Christmas. Is there a place at the time? Is there space in our schedule? Is there a way that we honor Jesus? I do I have a six-year-old who would be very upset if I planned my own celebration on her day. Because it would probably be really boring to her. And she'd be like, Dad, I thought it was my birthday. <coughs> you hear Christ saying, hey, I thought this whole thing was about me. 
I thought you were celebrating my arrival.